And for our next uh, plenary session, we will divided this day into big chunks, as you've noticed. Um, where can you get the support for the greenhouse gas emissions inventory? Uh, there's a lot of difficult things to, to consider when you start to do that. So your municipality may not have the required technical expertise in all areas. So let's talk about that for next session. And to head up the discussion, I want to hand it over to two experts in this field. Experts. <laughs> <laughs> so thank that. you very much. Shall we stand here or would you like to sit? No, okay. I'll, I'll stand. Okay. So we don't have slides for you. We decided you're probably pretty bored with slides at the moment, so we want to have a little bit of a lively discussion, Marco and myself, and invite you to interact with us as well. Now, the topic we address is dealing with data challenges. Sounds, hmm, do we really need to talk about such a technical topic? And the answer is yes, we do. When we want to do a baseline emissions inventory, when we want to do a monitoring emissions inventory, you need to have data. Without data, you have no knowledge to extract. And we have, through the experience of some of the projects that we've been involved in, uh, including the, the new Mesh Utility project, where we also have a few other colleagues who are joined in that project, but also Energy for Mayors, Cascade and Leap, we want to get the experiences together on how we deal with data challenges and how we, how we get maybe if identify good practices from that. Now, why do we need good data? And what is good data? And this is something Marco and I will be exploring. And essentially, it boils down to a few simple things. We need information on where energy is consumed, also to try and identify where uh, and how we could potentially change energy behavior. And we need to get an accurate picture of what is happening in our community within a particular geographical boundary. And for that, we need reliable data, we need accurate data, and we need data in a format that we can use. And we've stumbled across many, many challenges exactly on this topic. So over to, to Marco, maybe you could explain um, some of the main data challenges that, that you've come across with and, and very briefly how, how you've solved them. Also as a generic a European experience. Sure. Well, um, well first of all, um, what I'm going to say is just part of the truth part of, and it's related to uh, my professional experience and the experience of some of our partners that have been working with us in the past few years. But of course, I would be very happy later to hear if there is an integration to what I'm about to say, because I am sure that data challenges have been faced by every single local government that has tried or has accomplished to, imp to develop a sustainable energy action plan. Um, in my experience, we've had three main areas of challenge in data collection. One is the relationship with utilities um, as to data related to gas and energy and um, power consumption. Um, and that is one thing. Then mobility, traffic data have also been a challenge for us so far. And then other fuels used for heating, LPG and wooden biomass. These are the three main areas. As to utilities, we have been talking about that earlier uh, this morning. Mm -hmm. um, but let me just recap very briefly. Uh, to obtain um, gas and power data, we have been we're forced to contact utilities and distributors um, to obtain the data possibly aggregated uh, by sector, agriculture, industry, tertiary, households. And it's not always that easy, because, um, well, there are different issues, and I think all of you know what I'm talking about, but um, sometimes utilities don't understand, as I was saying this morning, what we're doing and why we need that data. And um, they're not so willing to, to share, because, well, data protection, uh, market opportunity, and of course, um, they're not, they don't always feel as stakeholders. Ryan this morning was mentioning that in Freiburg there is a perfect situation yeah. with small utilities, and that is good. 
it's engaging. Mm. There is a strong relationship between the municipality and the small utilities or the larger utilities. That doesn't always happen. That is not always the case. So the engagement of utility uh, usually pays off. And lately we have been having some good, good responses. We're getting I, data. I think in that sense it's quite important to... to the, de the, the utilities uh, are service providers. They... They offer a service and they get paid for that service. So they're sitting on essential information which we need for our inventories to understand what is the consumption of potentially also water, eventually other topics. Um, and we need to show to them and invite them to get into a win-win situation with us yep. here. I think that is probably our key message through Measure Utility as well. Yes, definitely, definitely. And, uh, and we're already seeing some some the importance of having real data because i mean uh in some cases we could use statistical data to um to decide which is to to evaluate what is uh, in fact the consumption of energy in a certain area there are national databases regional databases etc but um this is not what we want to do because we really need to know where we're starting from and and in fact in the municipality of vicenza which is a municipality with about 100,000 inhabitants not too far from Padova, where we're based, we did have an interesting experience with uh, data approximation because the National Energy Service Agency um, provided us with a list of the photovoltaic um, plants in the city. And so we calculated uh, approximately what could be the energy produced by the panels and by the plants. And then we discovered that the local utility which is partially owned by the local government, so it was easier, not so easy, but easier to engage, um, they provided us with real data. They didn't match. Yep. Oops, right. So <laughs> exactly. it's a quality, quality issue as well. You could monitor from yep. both angles. Yeah, yep. yep. so you get uh, data from national level and you approximate, mm -hmm. then you get the real data and they don't match. So there must be something wrong there, but we wouldn't have understood that without the, uh, the mm. cooperation of the local utility. So it was very important. And when you look, I know transport is probably the key area where most local governments really have, they struggle to find data. Um, what are the approaches that you found effective? Well, um, um, well, building a relationship was, uh, was important and also... Um, the, the legal framework that we have in place supported us a little bit because it makes it sort of mandatory to, to, to share. But um, the most important thing was to find, to, to, to engage in a practical way and, um, and ask for contribution for the development of actions. Mm -hmm. And if you do not have local transport data, what, what could your top-down approaches be? What, what kind of options do local governments have? Well, um, there is the, um, in Italy we have the, the National Customs Agency, and, um, and that can provide us with um, data, uh, fuel selling data. So we can actually get to what each um, gas station has sold as, in, as, as fuels mm. in, a, in, a lo in, a, in a municipality. And so we tried to, um, we tried to calculate, to approximate what, what, what would be the CO2 emissions if all the fuel that was sold in the fuel pumps in a certain municipality um, were actually consumed in mm -hmm. the local uh, territory. And uh, it was just an approximation, and, but we didn't, get good, we didn't get a good result. It was... Um, we got over 40% of the total of the overall CO2 emissions in that territory. And, uh, and Which sounds unrealistic then. Yes, okay. yes, definitely. So but it's, it's an option, but it, it's not 100% accurate and one needs to refine, I guess, refine the data. Yes, yes, and reducing. there are some opportunities. And I think that uh, uh, the city of Padova um, had a different approach and uh, maybe we could uh, share later on. Um, oh, why not right now? Can Padua please share with us what did they do with uh, how did they deal with some of the transport? Oh. There we go. Center. Yes, uh, we found we we found problems uh, in assessing the emissions from mobility, 
because uh, uh, especially for small villages around the big city, uh, probably because uh, the commuters uh, use those filling stations outside of the city and the, the figure goes up 40, 50 percent. It is not reliable. It's not a reliable data. So we try to uh, get the provincial or regional uh, data on sales that is provided uh, to us from the Ministry of Economy. And uh, we, so, so with a um, top-down process, we divided for the number of cars registered in the municipality. Mm -hmm. That is a, a figure that the, the national car inventory gives. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, of course, a specific uh, uh, thing related to Italy. But m maybe all the small municipalities around the big new municipality that have to do an, an inventory should uh, uh, could uh, share the similar uh, problem mm -hmm. of uh, overestimating the emissions uh, on uh, on mobility. Okay, thank you very much. This is a, a solution we found. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in your countries probably also have a national database where you could get some of that data and extrapolate from that. And even if it's not perfect, it gives you a rough guesstimate as a starting point. And we know we need to refine over the next couple of years, and we will get better at this, especially if a lot of these projects work together and we get a better understanding of your data challenges and your data needs. We are trying to find good practices. Maybe give me an example of a good practice with LPG gas or... or Wooden biomass, because that's quite a tricky one as well. Yeah, that that is that is a a challenging one, um, and I would also be very glad to hear if there are some other good practices about that, because wooden biomass, mm, not pellets, but Raw chopped wood. right, is often used in mountain municipalities, and at least in uh, in the area where we where we work. And in some smaller municipalities, um, wooden biomass can be a very significant mm. fuel for heating. And so in this one mountain municipality with about 10,000 inhabitants, spread it over four municipalities, um, we led a questionnaire. And that gave us some interesting results because we found out that 36% of the energy demand from households um, was basically from uh, wooden biomass. Mm. And there would have been, wouldn't have been any other way to understand um, the real market because there is no real market about that. It's a, not saying it's a black market, it's but a it's a more informal it, market. It's an informal mm. market because mm. everybody has got uh, woods in their backyard. So they chop one tree and they use it for two, three years and they know how much they consume, mm -hmm. and they showed that they don't. But there is no other way besides asking, okay. which is uh, quite a challenge. Yep. So what we are busy doing is we're collecting good practices. So if any of your communities have a good solution for data challenges and how to overcome these, be it working with a, with a utility or a number of utilities, uh, be it interesting top-down approaches, interesting bottom-up approaches, share those with us and we'll promote them for you and with you and help others to gain a better understanding of these data challenges. Because that's a stumbling block. If you cannot get reasonably good, reliable data in a format that you can use in your inventory, you're stuck. Um, and if you're stuck at that point already, maybe you get demotivated and we do not want to see you demotivated. So share with us your good practices and, and we look forward also in particular to Cascade and the other projects uh, because you all have varied and interesting experiences and we want to see and, and learn more of what you've been doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Marco and Marike. Um, we are now looking to our next speaker and uh, someone who is part of the coordination and management team of the European project Energy for Mares. Also involved in the management and development of the Covenant of Mare project in the province of Genoa as Covenant coordinator. Please welcome Miriam Badino. Hello. Ah, uh, fine, yes. Uh, I can do that. It's 
stronger. <laughs> Here are. <laughs> Hello to everybody. I'm here to talk about um, the key role of Covenant co um, supporters and coordinators to help local uh, authorities to, to proceed with their commitments in Covenant uh, of Mayors. Uh, I'm from province of Genova, which is uh, the coordinator of Energy for Mayors project, which will end uh, in April at the end of April, and as you see, is, uh, Energy for Mayors stands for a network of sustainable energy supported structures for Covenant of Mayors. Uh, we, are, um, so we are coordinating 15 uh, partners from all over Europe, uh, which comprises, uh, this partnership comprises uh, co Covenant uh, supporters, like ICLEI Europe is, uh, technical assistant uh, like uh, Sojeska, and um, coordinators like the province, for example, but you see it's for, from really all over Europe. Uh, it's actually the first uh, project which supports the supporters of the Covenant of Mayors. Uh, we are working closely with Covenant uh, of Mayors Office uh, and with Joint Research Center and also with the um, executive, executive Agency uh, for Competition and Innovation. Um, our, our role is to support uh, the supporters to the strengthening of, of network, as, uh, assisting municipalities which was, were selected uh, to, to um, develop their SEAPs, uh, monitoring the, the results and implementation, and also increasing the number of, of signatories. Uh, I remind you that coordinator, uh, we call co Covenant co Coordinator any public authorities or agencies that provided strategic guidance, so really helping to develop the SEPs, while supporter is uh, any network uh, of local or regional authorities that is promoting initiatives and networking the, the, the public uh, administrations uh, helping to exchange of experience. Uh, we, so far, uh, Covenant of Mayors is involving more than um, 170 uh, coordinators and supporters uh, for more than 4,000 signatories. And in Energy for Mayors, we, we are supporting 245 municipalities, of which 139 fully, uh, are fully supported. That means that really receive help in the, promoting, in, in the development of SEPs. And so far, 95 uh, SEAPs are, uh, have been developed. And some of, uh, of those are uh, uh, joint SEAP. So they are really gathering together small municipalities to make a bigger, uh, bigger group. So an effort that is uh, gathering together bigger numbers. And this, this is really valuable. Um, another thing that we, we, are, support, we are helping, um, we, we realize is really important, is the um, is the integration between an energy management system and the SEAP. Um, the common points are the initial analysis, uh, a continuous improvement plan, plan um, the internal capacity building in the local authority, and the monitoring. And these common points make it worth to, to work them together. Uh, the crucial difference is, of course, that the SEAP is dealing with the whole territory, while the AMS is or only working with the organization of the municipality. But th this can, can be <coughs> integrated anyway, because uh, so the SEAP gives a, a specific vision of, for the municipalities for the future, which can be um, realized through actions to, to reach the 20% CO2 emission re uh, reduction, while the ISO 50001, that is the, the new requirement uh, rules, let's say the, the new rules uh, under the uh, energy management system, gives requirements that a, publish, uh, a public administration should, um, should follow to establish, implement and maintain and improve an energy management system. Um, the synergy gives a lot of po positive aspect, aspects because the, the energy policy is well defined. Uh, the involvement of the top management is the kind of obliged. Uh, different sectors of the public administration can cooperate and we saw that is very important. Um, responsibilities are fixed, so it's very clear who does what in the municipality. Um, and this common uh, baseline action plan, implementation and monitoring of the actions can be done together. 
we, we can rationalize a lot the data collection, that is not often so rational, <laughs> so rational. Um, and obligation and needs are clear and follow. And also we can uh, help uh, to, to identify the best uh, performance indicator and wh what, what is their value. Uh, the ISO 50001 is, is internal the, uh, to the public administration, but get, can give a method to be applied to the whole municipality to, to be followed. So we can follow if, if we, the ISO, uh, so the AMS uh, and the SEAP uh, are developed together, we can um, develop a systematic approach and um, reach a continuous improvement uh, in energy efficiency, energy use and consumption. So it's like a, the culture of management, is, uh, of energy management is internalized in the public administration. So uh, in, the, in the project we have now uh, eight pilot MS uh, that are developing AMS uh, uh, and, and SEAP together. Uh, Monelia is uh, in the province of Genova and we are very proud of, of it because <laughs> we um, got the certification in December, while um, others are um, on, on development. And Maranello will be uh, focused on monitoring since the SEAP is already done. We will, will be the AMS working more on the monitoring phase. The guidelines are, are being developed by Sojeska and now, now they are in draft copy and they will be uh, issued in at the end of the project uh, after the experimentation phases on, on all the pilot uh, AMS. Um, energy for mayors can, can help uh, find a, a wide um, a European network of covenant uh, supporters and coordinators and it's very good to, to, to have experience and system and practical advices to to develop the co uh, covenant of mayors and as you, as you saw already the, the networking is really important and the exchange of experience is good. Uh, we, uh, we organized events and energy days, uh, around 300 events are being disseminated, uh, being disseminating the project so far uh, and the training of municipalities uh, also, uh, 35 ses sessions have been, have been organized and all our municipalities or supported municipalities received training so far. Um, there, are, there is also guidance materials to covenant uh, supporters and, and coordinators, like the support package for coordinators and supporters, uh, that is comprising a basic guidelines and a brief analysis of the needs. Mm, and this, like other resources, as uh, Ms. Rambelli said, uh, is contained in the toolbox. Um, you found probably the cards uh, of the toolbox uh, around, but this is the through the website of the project you can easily find the, the link and it's very good to to have a tool like this to gather together all the possible and the best available resources so please join it <laughs> um, we organize a, a lot of events uh, to um, are, uh, have been done in Huelva and Genova. Uh, the next will be very soon in Krakow, and then another one in Brussels, our international workshop uh, where municipalities and supporters and coordinators can participate. Uh, the next will be uh, about low carbon setters, uh, trend setters in 2020, and will be uh, in 10 days, yeah. <laughs> not 3rd and 4th uh, October. You are very invited and there is the program uh, and all the registration form online in the, in the website of the project. As you see, uh, these, um, these are the project countries. So the, okay, the, actually the dots are the partners. <laughs> and in these countries, there are uh, national working groups um, working. So you can, if you are of one of these country, countries, you will uh, find easier to, to join the the, the project, but around there are also uh, a lot of organizations like uh, Covenant, con mm, Covenant Clubs, Covenant of Mayors uh, Clubs, and like this uh, you, you can uh, join the national uh, working group and exchange information and experience, uh, find better uh, best practices uh, locally, uh, and reach large scale objectives, like for example the, the joint steps uh, can be, because you, you can see Mm, the needs, uh, gathering together the needs, uh, and also in identify the needs uh, and the, um, of the covenant uh, coordinators and supporters and municipalities in, in your country, as well as uh, training that is not 
last. So uh, we invite local authorities to join in and to join the Covenant of Mayors, uh, who wish to engage in the sustainable energy, and public administrations or networks uh, to, to become Covenant uh, coordinators and supporters. You are welcome to, to visit the website and contact us if you need uh, any information. Uh, so this is the, the website. And that's it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Super fast. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, okay, I'll uh, let you come back on stage shortly. But yes. first, we'll hear from our next speaker. Um, he's an architect as well as an energy expert. Uh, Worked for the regional government in the Skåne region of Sweden, where we are today. And um, he's been a secretary to the Swedish Commission on how to ease our independence on oil, as well as chairman of the Swedish Biogas Association. Please welcome Anders Nylander. Thank you. There you are. <laughs> okay, here is the slide. Uh, energy action planning made easy is the motto of this conference, but I think that is uh, not uh, the right motto. Um, energy action planning can be good, it can be fun, and it can be interesting, but it's not easy. Uh, I will uh, talk to you in the perspective of Skåne where we are now. It has uh, it's the southernmost region of Sweden. It has 1.2 million inhabitants uh, and it has uh, 33 municipalities. Uh, I'm working at an energy agency and uh, there are 380 of these in, in uh, Europe and every one of those could help you in the same way we are doing in, in Skåne. Uh, the strengths of the regional agencies is that they have broad experience in the field of energy and climate and so on, good know-how, well-developed regional, national and European networks that you can use in different situations. And they are also independent, autonomous and non-profit organizations. Back to Skåne. How we do it in Skåne? The first point I will point out is uh, knowledge. I just take just one simple example. Uh, emission of fossil carbon dioxide per capita. You can see Skåne in the southern of Sweden, uh, emission about two to 4,000 uh, kilograms per inhabitant. But if you look uh, at the map, you can see at the far north of, of Sweden, it's much darker, it's about uh, 10 tons, and also the island uh, Gotland is high. And why is that? It's, it's because uh, in the northern Sweden we are producing uh, uh, iron and steel from mining, and on, on Gotland uh, they are producing cement. And what do you see outside here? A lot of buildings using uh, concrete and cement and iron. So why are uh, we um, have a good figures in, in Skåne then? And th this will be the same situation around the globe. On the right hand side, you can see uh, the emissions, the red dot uh, uh, in Sweden uh, from the consumption. And you can see that 24, um, or you can say uh, 2.4 tons uh, that go on export for instance, a steel. But at the same time, we are importing about 4.3 ton per inhabitant uh, from the rest of Europe, of course, and from China and whatever. So you have to look at the consumption and the impact of the consumption. And that is, uh, for Sweden, about 9.5 ton per inhabitant. And you shall remind you about this small yellow dot in the right corner. I come back to that later. So this is just one point of, of knowledge. Um, so the objectives should be, Skåne as a geographic region can use a UN system on climate reporting models for all point sources. But you, 
And that's good for a national level, and it's good for the earth, and it can be used at a regional level, but it's not so comfortable on a municipality level. It will point in, sometimes in mm. wrong direction. But all municipalities, businesses and their own work, what they're producing, what they're consuming, they should use uh, an LCA perspective on their activities and their climate impact. And you know what you're buying, and you know what you're producing. That's not a hard figure to, to catch. Here is the emissions of greenhouse gases in Skåne as a total. You can see the transports uh, quite high, and they are not uh, decreasing at all, you can see. Uh, we have done a quite good job on uh, energy, the green um, parts of the diagrams, um, industrial processes a little bit, uh, and the agriculture, the blue, and the waste handling, the red on the top. And we have done a, a decrease between the 90s and 2009 of, of 23%, and that's rather good. But the last years are not so good. Um, but I shall make that. Then the second thing I want to point out is the support the agency can give. And how we do that in Skåne is by different uh, um, reports and uh, uh, conferences, workshops, uh, events, etc. Where we try to work and, uh, and spread the knowledge about uh, energy issues and, and um, greenhouse gases and so on. We also support uh, municipalities and I will take you to some short uh, diagrams now. Uh, this is from two years that we have worked together with 27 of the 33 municipalities in Skåne. And this is, is just the average energy use in municipal buildings. And on the left hand side you can see the kilowatt hours per square meter. That's a good key figure to use. And you can see uh, the red is uh, uh, district heating. The yellow is electricity, and the black and so on is natural gas and oil. So here you can immediately see which municipalities that are still using oil, and which um, municipalities that have good management of their buildings. And here you go into benchmarking, showing these for different uh, municipalities, and, and, and they can... Uh, uh, compete with each other and so on, and learn from each other. But you have to dig where you stand to get these figures. So here it comes down to uh, single buildings, and for three years of each building. And one year is a little bit colder than the other. We still have the key figure in the, in the left uh, kilowatt hours per square meter. But we can see that some buildings are, are, uh, are uh, almost uh, renewable energy. Uh, district heating in Sweden is mostly renewable. It would be about 80 to 90 percent. In some municipalities, 99 percent renewables in the district heating. But uh, some buildings are still using oil. By catching these figures, you easily see where you should go and make your homework. And it could look like this. Um, well, you can change a lot of buildings to, uh, to get away from the oil and get into renewables. Here is uh, on transport. It's more different. Here is just percent in the, um, the y-axle. And here is two years, 2009 and 2011. It's, uh, but you can see that many uh, municipalities are improving and uh, going up for 35% uh, renewable fuels in the transport sector in your own fleet of, of cars and buses and so on. That's pretty good. And, and you should show this to, to encourage the, the municipalities to, to 
go on working. But here I have showed you things that you can find figures where you, what you're buying and what you're using, what cars you're buying and what fuels you you're are really buying and so on. The third thing is cooperation. It is very important. Um, I just point out solar radio and, and Klimatsamverkanskåne is climate cooperation in Sweden, in Skåne. There are three big uh, regional organizations in Skåne. Region Skåne, uh, well, down here, and uh, Kommunförbundet Skåne, the, the association of uh, municipalities in Skåne, where I come from, and the county administration of Skåne. We are three different organizations, but we have the same target. And that, that's why we start to cooperate. And we have different angles, one pointing out the national policy, one picking up the municipalities, uh, what they want, and so on. And I was just going to show you something about Biogas Seed. That's one of the cooperations uh, fields we are working in. It's biogas for, for uh, fuel in the transport sector mainly and for producing biogas. And Skåne has a good opportunity. 23% uh, of, of the biogas production for the moment is in Skåne. And uh, half of the Swedish biogas flot uh, is in Skåne as well. So the, the public transportation in Skåne has decided that to 2018 be 100% fossil fuel free. And for the moment they are about 65% fossil free. Fossil fuel free. And how do we do this? We have to cooperate, we have to, uh, to get a lot of companies, municipalities uh, um, uh, and everybody into uh, the, the universities and so on to cooperate and put money into this uh, cooperation just to start talking to each other and working together to get uh, things done and to move from, from a fossil um, burning society to a fossil free. Okay, back to the yellow dot. There is a challenge that about 80 municipalities and, and com different companies and family has, uh, has joined. And they say that all their transports will be fossil fuel free by 2020. And the energy used for heating and cooling and also all the electricity they are buying are going to be fossil fuel free. And that's a, a challenge that is really good and easy to communicate. And you can see it on the bill every year, how much have you bought of this and this. And this is a good way of um, cooperating, uh, challenging each other and get figures that you can rely on. So the vision is for Skåne as a total, that it should be easy to live a climate smart life here and that we make smart ideas and concrete action for the climate, and that we make a lot of talking <coughs> that is needed, and a lot of action and efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Can I be here? Yep. Have a seat. Uh, may you please join us on stage um, for a short Q&A here. Um, when you look at the local governments and what they needed, what insights did surprise you the most? I mean, when you get all this data up there, something that surprised you the most? Uh, what they need. Yeah. They, they need a little uh, time, more time, and a little more, more uh, support to do these uh, things. And they have a lot of issues on the table every day and don't um, put this on uh, questions on, on top. But uh, you don't, when you put help them, then they uh, start working with it. So it's, um, it's a starter in a way. A starter? Uh, yeah, and a time. Would you agree with that image? Yes. Yes, yeah, sometimes municipal small municipalities have just one person dealing with everything, technical yeah. issue, <laughs> all the technical issues possible. 
and it's uh, always very challenging. He's always super overwhelmed and sometimes it's, it's difficult to let them understand that the SEAP can be an opportunity and not another burden on their shoulder and uh, that's, that's difficult. Is there something with working with them in local, you've been working with local governments in different aspects, but is there something in there that has surprised you, especially, more than anything else? Um, An assumption you thought would be true from the start, but then turned out to be something different? Or? Uh, yes, uh, sometimes you, you can believe that the, the economy argument should be very strong, but um, it's not always that way. It can be, but you often find that it's not. It's uh, the, the mental picture of something that is hard to get behind. Mm. And it can be even stronger than uh, money. And how do you try to work around that then? Information, knowledge, etc. Mm. Lots of talking. Lots of talking. And discussion. And listening to the... Uh, often they have, you have to listen to your, your customer or whatever you call them. Um, because, of, of course, uh, it's, you shouldn't point finger at them. You, you have to listen to them and try to uh, understand how they are thinking and why they are thinking in, in that way. But I mean, sometimes you looked at one of the, the uh, graphs that struck me the most was the sort of the consumption of fuel divided into the different municipalities of Skåne. Where one uh, town in particular, my hometown, and they stroke out because they were sort of 99% oil <laughs> bastard. <Yes>. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, they clearly aren't getting the picture here. What, do you, what sort of, how do you work with them? Or do you leave them behind and take them later on? I will never leave anyone behind, but I I must be much more patient with uh, with some municipalities than others. Mm. And um, of course, you can if you have, for instance, national uh, gas, you can uh, fill the other end of the pipe with biogas, yeah. and they won't notice the difference. <laughs> Cunning. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam, how about you? Has something that been surprising you? And mm, yeah, I would have said uh, at the beginning that the biggest, I mean, I don't know, I would have said that some municipalities were obviously joining because of some reason, for touristic reasons, or yeah. because they are really far away and kind of lost in the middle of nowhere. And instead, they usually are not very, so the political mm, involvement is really important in the sense that it, uh, they they not al always find it obvious to that that the SEAP is a the, the com covenant of mayors is an opportunity and sometimes the smallest uh, municipalities are the more enthusiastic the most enthusiastic ones uh, while maybe some somebody else could have uh, taken the most uh, from the covenant and yeah. they are not uh, still convinced and that's a real pity. So how do you try to convince them? We give them a nice, uh, nice view of what what the others are doing, and they're behind. <laughs> you have the, so the maybe they will. So you have a hit list, uh, and then you have a shit list of people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but sometimes they they still need some more engagement. Uh, yeah. some, so we, we try to show them that it's possible, is it even possible? if even if you're very small and you can do a lot. Yeah. And how about the, the economic argument? Do you do you agree with, with Anders that sometimes it's not the strongest one? That the biggest uh, the, the cities are, are the economy. I mean, you're trying to get people to move forward. Is the economy the economic argument strong or? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's always. We we tried uh, as I told you that uh, that we tried to to join municipalities to to um, reach bigger number. Yeah. Mm, and so maybe it's easier to uh, to act indeed because it's, if you have a 800 people uh, in a municipality is really difficult to... For example, if they have to change the, f the municipal fleet, sometimes the municipal fleet is just maybe one car, <laughs> maybe. Maybe one car. <laughs> so it's... How do, you un how do you... What's your advice trying to understand sort of the, the local needs? How do you... You said you have to listen a lot, but yeah. could you be more concrete than that? Or is it sort of... Where do you, when do you start picking up on things? Um, no, no, I don't. You should just listen and... and um, uh, Is the point the that they have to feel that they are being listening to rather yes, than being an active yes, listener? Yes, uh, um, of course you will 
put arguments for for ch- making a change in the community. Yeah. But uh, if you respect them, they respect you and your knowledge, and then you are on, on speaking terms, yeah. and then you can start uh, influence them. influence them. You can't uh, bump into uh, say you should be hundred percent fossil free, uh, fossil free free. Uh, that's not a good argument. But you, c- you can never scare someone into a... No, I don't think so. Oh. And I, I really think uh, a lot of people want to change if they f- find a nice way and easy way to do it. Mm. You feel comfortable driving a biogas car. Mm. It's, uh, it's nice. It's not uh, terrible or uh, very expensive or anything like that. It's, uh, is it mm. important to get sort of the... Sometimes you get all these arguments, got these beautiful slides and so on, this is the reasons, but sometimes we get, tend to forget the sort of emotional side ahead. Should we get people to start, when we want to move them forward, should we, is it important to have them ride on biogas buses or feel the cars or understand them sort of with more senses than just sort of the arguments? I think uh, it's very important to, to listen to all the stakeholders and to involve them really, even the... the 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 cit- all the citizens for example sometimes they they can give you very clever uh, and uh, unusual ideas that can that you could put in the self uh, that th- is the their kind of vision of their city at the end they live there so, mm-hmm. so like like for example also uh, we try to involve uh, like scouts also or uh, any kind of organization that can be found in, uh, in ah, the territory. using the NGO as a way the NGOs as a way of sort of influence them. Mm. Using yeah. the, the, the NGO sector as a way yes, of influence. Also, yes, yes, yes. And something we, we did uh, recently is a, a game, actually. Uh, we let them play a game that is called uh, Go Renewable. And it's, uh, it's quite fun because uh, they, they play the game uh, building their own setup uh, in their territory. And also with the kid we do that. But uh, yeah. okay, maybe it's less... Uh, Realistic, they 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 dream too much, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's it's nice because they we we can really have the the perception of what what they think about their their own territory, what's their mm. dream. But oh. I, I think it's a, it's a good way to make people test things. Uh, we have one um, project that is on uh, um, young children in sixth class. Uh, they have or proposed to. Um, find the timetable, uh, go with a bus to a certain point, take some pictures, write a short story, and present it. Really, to do that, to go to the bus station and, and take the bus, move with it, instead of always being driven by the parents yeah. from point to point. I think th- that is important as well. 2020, they will be 20 years, and then they will have an, another behavior in transportation. So be patient and soon enough everyone will come along. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about earlier today about the, the, the skeptics because there's, there seem to be a lot of people here who also feel that there's some people that you can't get around or that you that sort of hinder your way forward, slow you down or if you will. How do you deal with them? What's your best advice? Is it be patient as well or is it sometimes you feel like you should be ignored? Or? They are a part of civilization. <laughs> you know, it's a d- democracy. <laughs> so, so uh, you have to deal with them, and, and you have to. But you have to find your stakeholders that you like to work with. Um, but let them be beside you. Don't turn the back on them. Just let them be there and and try to work in in. Uh, but not focus on them. Is that no, what you're not focus on them. Uh, Whenever they want to speak to you, you you will answer. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, never turn them back to them, but but don't put uh, a lot of your own energy into them because it will sooner or later ruin your <laughs> your, <personal energies. laughs> your own en- uh, energy. So make sure you have your own energy management system by not yeah. focusing <laughs> on the, yeah, yeah. the yeah. drainage. I think so. <laughs> What's been your strategy? I think. Uh, pushing them from the bottom in the sense that uh, if you involve citizens and they know that that is wor- worth and uh, they want to go green, let's say, and maybe they, they attend events and they, they see that uh, around something is going on, then maybe they will push the administration to, 
Ah, så, du, så you squeeze them from two sides then. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's a, I think that's a great end point. Thank you so much for ca- joining us. Uh, we will have okay. some candy coming up. I, I received them. Yeah. I, I will take uh, the second. Excellent. <laughs> You're taken care of in the candy department perfectly. <laughs> Uh, thank you so yeah. much. It's now thank time you. for thank a you. short coffee break. Yes. Um, let's give them yes. applause. And since this is such an interesting topic, we again c- encourage you to conversate with each other, ask questions to the panelists, and don't forget to visit the exhibitions. Uh, and you have, have a, so one small little homework for this uh, coffee break as well. Because in the spirit of not letting a valuable resource go to waste, I want to start your conversation with asking each other, what's your hidden talent? Beyond lowering emissions and saving energy, what else are you really good at? Is it baking bread? Is it biking? Is it dancing in a ballet company? Tell each other and we'll see you here at 10 to 4.